uh, you can either join our Telegram or jump into our app. We want you to uh, just get in and see how best you can take advantage of Uniswap v3. And today, we're hosting uh, one of the uh, awesome teams mentioned by Hayden and the Uniswap team, um, DeFi Labs and Federico. And the reason why we're doing this is because so much work is happening on Uniswap v3 that we wanted to help facilitate getting the word out of these great projects. And Federico Landini is a co-creator and architect of DeFi Lab. Greetings, Fede. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And uh, thank you for hosting this. Yeah, it's a pleasure. So uh, why don't we jump in? And yeah. uh, I'm going to start with questions. And, and the format is, folks, just like Clubhouse, we'll have a question around, really, this is going to be about DeFi Labs uh, and LPs and Uniswap V3 and the future of liquidity provider activity and analysis. Uh, if you have any questions, raise your hand. Um, Mario is going to help facilitate, make sure I don't lose track, and uh, make sure that I don't laugh too much uh, because I've had so much fun in these that sometimes um, I get carried away. So uh, with that in mind, I think we're going to jump into our first question. Fede, tell us about DeFi Labs. Who are you guys? You came out of like a, a flash out of nowhere mm. doing amazing work. Um, tell us your story. Well, yes, uh, we are a very small team, and uh, our idea is to create some uh, good uh, data visualization and tools to help uh, people to make sense of the DeFi space and uh, to help people uh, um, understand the risk and the rewards that all these protocols are uh, offering to us. We, as I said, we are a small team. Uh, it's uh, just two of us. There is me uh, that works as an architect. I'm a long uh, uh, term uh, uh, enthusiast in DeFi. I started following crypto in 2017 and uh, loved it. And uh, since then I'm kind of hooked to all about uh, crypto and DeFi. And um, together with me, uh, Stacy joined me. <laughs> Uh, uh, with the role of uh, front-end developer and taking care of everything about uh, front-end and also development in general, let's say. She's actually my wife, so as you can imagine, we are a close uh, <laughs> team, a very close uh, relationship, right. and our roles are a bit uh, um, <laughs> overlapping sometimes. But um, <laughs> basically, a couple of months ago, I started looking into, into Uniswap V3, I read yeah. the white paper, and as I often do, I started doing my models for myself and my studies, um, and I was doing uh, some uh, Excel calculation, and I did uh, a Uniswap V3 simulator in Excel. Uh, my wife saw it. She was very interested, and uh, she was like, whoa, why we don't we develop something and uh, we publish something for the community? This is how DeFi Life starts. And uh, we never would have expected to get so, so much attention and so much uh, feedback from the community. But uh, we launched one month ago and uh, we, we, we are getting quite a lot of attention and we are getting excited and we want to build more. That's right. That's awesome. Uh, and I think folks can go to DeFi Labs at defi-lab.xyz as yeah. the website. And yeah. if you're you're currently on your mobile phone, you can jump over there and take a look. I mean, it's just amazing. First of all, the Uniswap V3 strategy simulator. Could you tell us a little bit more about the strategy simulator and um, you know who is it for? How does one use it? Um, and and what's yeah. re what what really is getting used? Like what people really love about it? Yes. So when uh, when Edan and Uniswap team uh, launched the white paper, I started uh, re reading into it, into the white paper, and trying to understand how uh, Uniswap v3 was different from Uniswap v2. I think it's a very cool product and offers a lot of flexibility and a lot of options to traders, but it can be a bit overwhelming and a bit complicated if you uh, just approach this uh, starting from zero. So as I said, for myself, I started building a tool that would help me to understand how being an LP in V3 is different from being an LP in V2 or uh, being just an odler of uh, tokens uh, using standard strategies. So I deep dived into the white paper and into the math 
and uh, understood the logic behind and tried to build this tool that allows you quickly and uh, easily to simulate your strategy and to understand mm -hmm. how your strategy would uh, work under different market market conditions. Got it. So, so when you know, if if folks are are coming to the strategy simulator, mm -hmm. is there something you know, if you were to say, hey, when you come to our site, what you really need to focus on is this first thing. You know, what do folks usually gravitate to, or where do you usually like folks to to sort of engage with well, this experience? So, I think there is uh, two main functionalities that are quite interesting, and this is uh, where the users are uh, focusing their attention. And also, I receive mm -hmm. a lot of questions on our Telegram. So the right. first part of the tool is very good to uh, simulate and to place uh, the price ranges. So as mm -hmm. uh, most of us probably know in V3, uh, the main uh, innovation of V3 is that uh, the protocol allows us to make uh, a minimum and a maximum uh, uh, price range, uh, yeah. price limit to set a range in which the um, liquidity is active. So um, this is a big difference from V2 that it was more uh, passive. In this way, we have right. a, an uh, active uh, strategy, let's say. So this is the theory, but uh, what are the implications of setting a range and uh, how setting a wide range or a narrow range will impact our, uh, our performances? So our tool let us uh, uh, compare uh, up to two strategies. So we can, set, uh, we can select a pool for example, Ethereum and uh, USDC, for example, and we can yep. simulate strategies and see how uh, setting a large or a narrow range will impact our uh, possibilities of uh, uh, gaining fees. So uh -huh. one thing that for me is very important and I try to make very clear in the tool is that mm -hmm. um, uh, we always have a trade-off between risk and rewards, like everything in life, basically. So right. setting very narrow uh, price range allows us uh, to, to gain uh, very high fees, but obviously uh, it's quite risky because with a very volatile market like uh, crypto is, right. Um, right. Uh, the price might go out of our range and our liquidity is not active anymore. Uh, mm -hmm. Therefore, yes, we might uh, gain a lot of uh, fees but uh, we also have the risk that the price will go out of our range and our liquidity will not be active anymore. Right, right, right. So, and, and so people can, you know, liquidity providers can really play around with whatever their opinions of the market is uh, for these particular pool pairs and use your app, uh, the DeFi Labs app, to sort of simulate what yeah. sort of revenue they would get. Now, um, so, so they can take these numbers, these r price ranges, uh, and then go to the Uniswap app and then enter in the range after seeing how those ranges would perform. Is that Correct. maybe some, yeah. one of the things we want to do? Got it. Um, and so, you know, you know, when you, when users come back, what are, what are you hearing from liquidity providers? I mean, we're in your Telegram as well, but what are some of the things you're hearing from liquidity providers telling you that they need that's really important that, that you think everybody should know? Uh, so I feel like, of course, um, uh, Uniswap 3 I think it's a very, um, it's a great innovation, uh, is uh, bringing new functionalities into DeFi that uh, are quite revolutionary. Uh, yeah. What I, uh, The feedback that I get from user is that uh, the user interface to enter position is quite uh, uh, simple and uh, it doesn't help them to uh, understand what are the best range that suit their uh, risk right. uh, reward profile and mm -hmm. this is where we come into play we think right. that we can uh, uh, we can support the user in these decisions mm -hmm. and uh, we can uh, our site can be used side by side with the Uniswap UI to yes. to to help uh, the users in this uh, step that is very very important because mm -hmm. uh, once your position is in with the high fees that we have now on uh, Ethereum uh, is not very good to change uh, your mind uh, that often. So I right, think uh, right. it's good that you are clear on your decision and that uh, you mm -hmm. made uh, a good uh, study and um, a good thinking about what you want to achieve before yeah. opening the position in itself. Excellent. Excellent. You know, it's interesting. We, you know, and I think that's, that's also what we hear as well. 
uh, that you know folks are not sure how to put in their ranges on the Uniswap app. Um, they love the power that Uniswap has given them, uh, B3 has given them to set these ranges, but you know figuring out where you'd like to be is right. is a challenge. Yes. Yes. Hello. Fede, can Sorry. you still hear me? It's Fede. I can hear uh, you. I, I'm not talking. <laughs> yeah, Mario? I think uh, Tarek might have lost his connection. Uh, can you hear I me can still? Hear, I can hear Tarek now. Yeah, I can oh, hear okay. Fede. <laughs> Thanks for calling out. Um, yeah, so just of, again, um, I sometimes we have this fancy uh, the internet connections here that get a little bit funky. But um, what I wanted to ask was... Mm -hmm. um, one of the questions we're getting, and I share this with you. So in our Telegram, um, we've now been really lucky to have about you know about sixteen hundred folks come into our Telegram to learn more about Uniswap v three, and and we love telling them about DeFi Labs. And one of the questions we're getting this week was, hey, once I put in a position, what do I do next? Like, do I you know have to? And and if the position goes out of range or there's a change. Do I have to create a new position? Do I have to remove it? And I was curious, you know, when folks, you know, when, when folks come to DeFi Labs and um, they then go on to Uniswap, take a position and things change, what's your view on how they should come back to DeFi Labs and then maybe use the app to adjust, change, or, or remove positions? How would you approach that, that question? I mean, uh, our tool, of course, allows you to uh, to simulate again. If uh, mm -hmm. this is a, a very common problem, because uh, and mainly in the last month, because the market has been so volatile, that yeah. uh, setting a, a range is not a guarantee that uh, the your range will be relevant for long term. This is a big problem. Um, the problem I see. At, the moment with uh, these uh, the gas uh, the gas fee on Ethereum level one is that for a small trader changing positions uh, often is uh, it's quite difficult because the transaction fees itself are quite demanding. I think that there is where a tool like uh, the ones you are uh, developing that uh, automate a bit this kind of uh, active management could help the small uh, traders, at least when we are talking about trading uh, or using Uniswap V3 on uh, Ethereum level one. I'm very excited about level two because uh, the promise of a level two is that uh, the transaction fees will be much lower. And so I think that also smaller uh, LPs will be allowed to be much more active in their strategies. Okay, now I don't hear anybody anymore. Yes, I think uh, Tarek has a problem. He, he now left the thing. I don't know, there was like some, some issue. Um, let's just wait for him to reconnect. He should be back in any minute, hopefully. And I think we also have a, have a, a question from, let's see, from Zeta Seek. Hello. Sorry. So where did, where did, where did I... You are back. <laughs> I'm back. Yes. Just, good, thank good. you, Twitter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no it just says connect yeah, no <laughs> All right. So, um, Federico, I missed mm -hmm. your ending, and I apologize for that. Um, yeah. Uh, well, uh, just uh, summarizing what I was saying about uh, changing open um, uh, LP position, uh, what I say, what we discuss within the community is the difficulties that small LP have uh, to have a very active uh, strategy in the Ethereum level one due to the transaction costs. And I was saying that this is where I think a product like, like yours that manages uh, uh, liquidity for, uh, for a smaller LP could have a very good impact. While I was saying, I was saying that I'm quite excited about uh, 
other tools that uh, on the other yeah. side will allow a, a, a higher, uh, more active positions yes. also for uh, uh, smaller LPs yes. uh, in an independent way. Yes, no, and, and we agree as well. Very excited about L2. Uh, Mario, is it okay to ask the first question? Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, we have Zetar Seek here on, on for the spaces who wants to talk. So if you guys are ready, okay. I can you know. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're taking questions. So anybody has a question, I think. I see a question here on Twitter. Do you plan to make some V2 versus V3 yeah. profitability migration? Tarek, one second. Um, let's, uh, let's, let's talk to Zeter uh, first. Hello. I'm, I just, my I'm, name is oh, David. Oh, there you go. Hello, my name Hi, is David. David. I, I work on this search engine, Hi, but I have a question uh, more general. So on layer two, for example, Arbitrum, which is going to go live soon, and we'll see where Uniswap will uh, be active on which of those layer twos, but more or less Arbitrum, they will be there, right? How is then the liquidity uh, uh, separated? This is just some basics, but it makes easier, uh, makes thinking about usefulness of such tools um, and predicting the future usefulness even like easier because how much more complex will everything be when the liquidity is spread and uh, will the, these tools show is the same strategy will the fees be uh, accounted for in the equation or you know uh, how much more complex will things go uh, yeah. see yeah so this is a very good question so we have planned to improve this uh, this tool we are in talk with the Unisop Foundation to get a, a grant that will allow us to uh, continue uh, developing and uh, introduce new functionalities. So one, one side that we are uh, very excited and we want uh, to expand on is uh, the fee uh, calculation and uh, the fee estimation for the future. So when uh, we did this first version of the tool, uh, Uniswap V3 was not live yet, so we didn't have any kind of uh, historical data and uh, there was not too much experience in the space because it was such a new product that we, we, couldn't, um, um, we couldn't find uh, data to base uh, a very deep analysis of future uh, fees. Uh, um, yeah, you you to, to you, you were tool. in the future, and now you, we're already uh, <laughs> close to like six so, months. But yeah, thank you. Good good answer. Thank you well, very much. So so now that uh, now that uh, Unisop is live for uh, Unisop three is live for one month, uh, we start having some data that we can play around with, and uh, we will for sure uh, improve the tool to help the user. Uh, we don't know yet about Arbitrum and the level two because it's so new again that uh, we, at least uh, myself, don't have a clear overview of how the architecture will work and how the liquidity will be um, uh, will be uh, shared or not between the level one or level two. But it's something that we will look into uh, very closely because we really think that uh, this is where small uh, LPs uh, will go uh, for their active uh, trading. Yeah, but it also depends on, on the pools as well, right? I mean, even if Uniswap you know, is deployed in Arbitrum, you still need the pools to move from Ethereum to Arbitrum uh, and get started. I think one of the things that we found is that pool operators are still, um, and pool creators are still enjoying P2, um, even though that, uh, you know, um, it is much more efficient, capital efficient to be on V3. And, and one is much more capable of having or, or creating, you know, something Zaki Manin, our, our founder, calls moneyness, um, you know, uh, low slippage or, you know, um, tradable pools. And I think the question we have is, you know, what else will get pool operators to move to Uniswap V3? I don't know if you had any ideas about that, Fetty, because that's going to be the same challenge to get them to move to Arbitrum and and L2 is right. Well, uh, uh, to move to V3, I, I, I see a lot of, uh, tra uh, of uh, tweets uh, from Adam from uh, Uniswap, and I, I understand this point when he's saying that uh, even if you want to have a very passive uh, strategy with a very large uh, uh, price range, you would yeah. actually be better to be in V3 than in V2. And I, right. is, this is also how I kind of manage my position in V3. Uh, since uh, I'm quite a small, uh, small, small LP, 
I really feel like uh, maximizing the time that uh, you uh, the price will stay in your range is the best bet, yeah. best bet right. that you have as a small trader. <laughs> Uh, so I feel like uh, also as a B2 uh, LP, you might want to move your liquidity to v, uh, V3 and keep a very, uh, very wide and range. And your, so that, your uh, tool that... actually shows V2. You forgot to say that. I played with that. It's great. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's actually three yeah. strategies, right? V2 and two. Uh, yeah. uh... Yes, it does show uh, V2. It does show how V2 compares to V3. But uh, what I think it's important, uh, and this is where we are going to improve the tool, it will to show that even uh, keeping a very wide range, V3 should in the long term outperform V2. So all the people that are now still in V2, uh, they should uh, eventually, once that uh, uh, the risk of the new smart contracts um, are, uh, you know, the the, the new protocol is a, a battle test, let's say, and people understand a bit better one, how it works and all the, the functionalities be, behind the new design. I think people will just move because uh, they will make more money uh, being in V3 compared to V2. Cool. Did that answer your question, Zeter? <laughs> it was a little longer, but... <laughs> yeah, thanks. Uh, no yes. And if you, if you type into our search engine, DeFi Lab, uh, your uh, tool is first, and I, I have to tweak, tweak oh, the you. algorithm so it stays more or less. Uh, I think. In, okay. <laughs> thank you. We like this uh, this marketing. <laughs> yes, free marketing is the best, right? <laughs> yeah, but uh, I'm not, not earning any money. It's just for covering the ecosystem, and anybody can run a note for further marketing. But I'll stop now. Thanks. Uh,